Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is the Earth Master out here, August 21st, 2024. It's about 8.54 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity on the globe shows a 3.0 here around the Philippines and also a 2.5 here across the Mediterranean area where we did see a 4.2 earthquake out here across the plate boundary uh, earlier this evening. So let's start off here in California. Still getting uh, a couple different regions out here of earthquake activity. One around the Ridgecrest area, one over here around Bakersfield where we've seen that uh, five pointer a couple weeks back now. Uh, so still seeing uh, some aftershock sequences here. Nothing of any abnormal elevated activity for now. Just a handful of smaller quakes out across the southern portion of the state of California. Uh, Northern California looks like uh, getting a little bit of movement up here around Lake Tahoe. Uh, a couple of ones coming in here. Some very small microquake activity. Uh, this area last, I think it was last month here, seen a, uh, a decent amount of earthquake activity. Uh, not large magnitudes, but uh, the multitude of quakes here were somewhat elevated. Uh, it seems like periodically we do get a little bit of movement underneath the Lake Tahoe area. There is some fault systems that run through that area. Uh, also here across the Nevada region near Walker Lake. Handful of smaller quakes as well. Uh, Northern California, we got uh, this little earthquake here, 1.6, 12 miles deep here into the Cascadia subduction zone so um, let me go over and check out the trimmer map see what's going on with cascadia trimmer tonight 735 epicenters of trimmer um i want to get a total tally because if you look here over the past probably 10 days uh we've been elevated and um it even beat the previous level here that we've seen about a month or so ago so i'm gonna go back uh looks like it stirred up around the the 7th of August here so a couple weeks in there I just want to see what we got for a total tally uh, and, and that's pretty significant right there about 8,294 epicenters of trimmer uh, we did have a little bit down here in Northern California Southern Oregon but the past uh, week or so two weeks have been mainly confined up here underneath the uh, Washington area and this region it's been a little while since we've seen any trimmer activity out here specifically in this region so it looks like things are catching up but uh it's a pretty decent number uh, in the last 30 days 8294 epicenters of trimmer those are not earthquakes but uh, trimmer activity that occurs uh, into the deeper areas of the subduction zone the cascadia and uh, it's basically a sign here that that the uh, juan de fuca plate is slowly obviously slowly being subducted underneath the north american plate here and they pre they create a little vibrational frequency as that trimmer occurs as the two plates there slide slowly past one another uh, unlike an earthquake there where you got a sudden release of built-up energy but you know don't uh don't discredit this because we're looking at uh, you know some elevated activity upstream i'm sure I've always said that when we see higher trimmer counts out here, that means that there's a higher chance of a earthquake on the Cascadia. It just makes sense. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple smaller quakes here, nothing big. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the area of Yellowstone. And uh, let's see here, some wind and thunderstorms earlier. That's just been a common feature here in the summertime there at uh, Yellowstone couple smaller quakes as you can see here on the Mary Lake station one right here uh, one late last night and maybe a couple here in the last uh, few hours or so but those are generally very small earthquakes uh, the largest one was a 1.8 uh, further movement out across Oklahoma Texas nothing major going on one little earthquake in the new Madrid seismic zone this morning a little 1.9 getting a handful of earthquakes out here across the northeast as well although it looks like that's a little odd huh three earthquakes in the same region uh literally within minutes of each other uh, but there's distance a couple hundred miles there between some of these quakes so it's uh, a little interesting all about uh one two o'clock in the morning here nothing big but uh, still interesting activity out there uh, Kilauea Volcano still waiting. Uh, we got about, let's see what we got here for the earthquake sequence here. About 62 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. 
I do want to give a double check here uh, for this volcano on the Big Island. See what we got here on the seismograph station. Uh, past 12 hours here, probably showing a little bit more than what was showing on the USGS side of things, but uh, nothing big. Not a not a major earthquake swarm like we've seen here a day or so ago, uh, but still confined to the upper east rift zone where um, we've seen our latest magma intrusion. Notice that loss of magma here. Visible on the two day, visible on the week as well. We were quite elevated. That magma got displaced here a little bit further off from the summit over to the um, upper east rift zone and a little bit down here across the middle east east rift zone as well so just uh it's a waiting game we'll continue to keep an eye on that for sure because things could advance pretty quickly uh getting a bunch of earthquake activity up here at the curl Cam uh kamchatka area that uh nothing big this is the area that seen that uh, seven pointer out here uh, a few days back now on the 17th so some aftershock sequences occurring there in that area uh, a little bit of migrational pattern here southward uh, of course this area you know can easily produce a nine pointer i think it's uh, got enough steam built up out here but uh, we'll see what happens a little bit of activity further south as well towards japan with a 4.6 uh, far as any major activity goes across South America, got uh, some deeper activity this morning. Looks like a handful of shallower adjustment down across the Prudhoe Trench and the South Sandwich Trench here, getting in on some activity today with a 4.7. Fairly recent earthquake there. Uh, man, Puerto Rico looks a little active. We haven't checked that in a little while. Uh, well, not in the USGS map, but looks like on the EMSC model here, where she, uh, we're seeing a. Uh, uh, some twos and threes out there all across that area uh, but USGS not picking up on that so a little odd but there is some earthquake activity ramping up looks like in that area uh, middle America trench centered down here across the southern end of that area with a bunch of forest stirring up uh, let's see here there's Alaska way up north here got a little bit of activity stirring up outside of Anchorage here Looks like they've seen a 3.8 earlier this evening near Valdez. About 11 miles deep for that quake. And uh, typical smaller quake activity across the Cook Inlet area and along the subduction zone here of the Aleutian Trench. Nothing big for now. Uh, out in China, fairly recent earthquake out there, 5.2. And a couple other smaller quakes out here across the uh, Middle East area. Uh, there's that uh, 3. Point, wow, 3.5 being mentioned here on the USGS map in Greece from earlier this morning. Uh, we are seeing a handful of earthquakes out there, though. As you can see on the earthquake 3D. Is this a recent quake? 8.52 p.m. Fairly recent. I guess there was a, another three-pointer out there. A little bit further to the... Uh, to the north of this area right now but yeah 3.3 coming into this area uh iceland let's go ahead and check out iceland here real quick see if we got anything major going on up there uh, i was gonna say tomorrow's friday but it's not <laughs> it's thursday but that's okay we got some much cooler temperatures coming in here to california i'm loving it planning on uh, having a barbecue in celebration of the cooler weather uh, some minimal, very small earthquake activity out here across the Grindavik area, northward through the Craters region. Um, yeah, just we're quite elevated out here, but uh, no sign of an imminent eruption. Let me see what we got here for our latest uh, run times here. Eight hour run times that tells us the um, ground inflation underneath the area as far as vertical displacement goes. And we're going to run over here to the Grindavik station, which is uh, right here. So not concerned about east or northward movement right now with this volcano activity. It's vertical displacement. And there's the last eruption there back in the end of May. Since then, uh, goodness, we've been going up and up and up and up. And we are at a level not seen with the previous last couple eruptions here. We're well above any of those uh, levels that we had seen 
So uh, something's going to happen out here. Continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, earthquake or uh, space weather activity. A little bit of M flare activity earlier this afternoon in M5.1. It looks like a very impulsive event. I don't think it has any uh, CME associated with it, but uh, let's go see what we have here. That's going to be from that sunspot there. Uh, the, well, the one I've been picking here all along here. It's going to be sunspot 3796, produced an M5.1 flare. Uh, does not appear to be eruptive, so no CME. But it is still possible we could see some X flare activity from that region. It is currently, um, let's take a look here, uh, very close to being center disk here. So we'll continue to watch this area. It's about the only region of any concern when it, uh, when it comes to space weather flaring activity. Uh, this has a separation core, but I'm really not impressed with this one or any other sunspots, mainly right about here in that area. And a couple newer sunspots around the northeastern limb that we'll watch, but uh, hard to tell right now what, uh, uh, what those are capable of. Overall threat, 20% chance for X flare, M flare at 60, C flare around 99% chance there. And as you can see, green across the board, that means no greenery up there in the sky as far as auroras go for now. Hopefully we can get that to change. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, hurricane status, right? I know there's uh, some tropical development out in the eastern Pacific. Kind of uh, got to keep an eye on it because uh, it's going to be heading off towards the Hawaii area. Uh, so we'll use this. And I'm thinking, though, just looking at this massive high-pressure system, if it moves northward, that should allow maybe a little bit more northward track towards Hawaii. But we don't want that, obviously. Uh, but let's see what these weather models are forecasting here. There's a couple tropical disturbances. Hawaii is right here, just barely outlined there in the Pacific. So we'll put this into motion and uh, see what that high pressure does. Yeah, it's basically keeping that fairly south. It looks like it's just going to be a near miss with uh, some tropical activity there in the Big Island. A couple other tropical systems behind that as well. That is just a massive high pressure ridge out there taken up almost the entire Pacific Ocean. Goodness, I do not like that at all. <laughs> I'm not a high pressure guy. I like these low pressure colder systems out here. That's nice. And speaking of that, uh, yeah, we got some cooler weather coming up here. Um, thermodynamics. Let's check out the uh, temperature anomalies here. Uh, there's our massive low pressure system deep trough that's going to be setting up over here across northern california bringing temperatures down look at that beautiful here across northern california maybe 20 degrees below average with uh, a little bit of snow up in the higher elevations as well maybe a little bit of rain out here across my neck of the woods outside of chico uh, that will last uh, for the remainder of the weekend uh, and then high pressure builds back in for the uh for the following monday but uh, it does look like we'll see a little bit of rain. Let me check out the windy map here. Check out our rainfall accumulation here real quick. Um, what they do different here? This is something different. It used to say next three hours, next four hours. Now they give us a little, uh, a little window here that we can adjust. I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. Um, not really expecting much, but hey, a sprinkle or two. I'll take a quarter of an inch. That would be awesome if we get that much. Redding obviously going to get a little bit more uh, with this low pressure. Maybe, uh, wow, almost up to an inch. That's the ECMWF model, of course, along the coastline. That's always getting wet up there uh, around Crescent City. It looks like over uh, an inch and a half of rain. The HRR models are not uh, picking up on it yet. GFS run. Uh, a little bit less here, so But uh, hopefully the ECMWF models right I'll take some uh, I'll take some rain showers out here in Northern California after uh, a very hot summer goodness All right folks, I'm out of here have yourself a beautiful evening and um, Seismograph stations out here are fairly quiet fairly calm 
Not a whole lot of activity stirring up as we speak, but uh, that can change in the blink of an eye. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here for the uh, Thursday morning update. Take care, folks.